Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at the Frosty Firefight Tower Defense. A couple of quick notes before we get started is, first, it's really worth playing on your Hunter while doing these tower defenses, as you'll have access to the Stop Right There talent, as well as the Kung Fu Kick, which can really help with crowd control and will allow you to push a little bit farther. The second thing is, is your towers and construction. Your boulder roller tower needs to be at least level 30 or so to really be effective in this tower defense. However, the higher the level you have all of your towers, the more effective this setup is going to be. As you can see, I'm near max in my boulder roller and my other towers like my lightning are in the 30s to 40s range. So as you get to higher levels, you probably won't even need to play on a hunter as your towers will take care of everything for you. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get started and summon our first wave. So first things first, we immediately want to get some boulder roller towers out and you want to have enough space here to be able to place about three more towers. So we'll place it somewhere in this neighborhood and that will give us plenty of space for more towers. My recommendation is to go ahead and get your first three to four towers out as soon as you can and then start upgrading. So we'll start with a couple more boulder roller towers on the bottom side and then one party starter tower to start giving us the attack speed benefit. At this point, each time you level or each time you place a tower down, you want to level it up to level five to give it the most benefit. For the party starter towers, we always want to select trait A to get more attack speed for our towers. For our boulder roller towers, we're always going to select trait B as it'll allow us to hit more enemies. This first tower here is kind of questionable if you want to upgrade as we will replace it fairly early, but I can afford the extra points so we go ahead and just make it a little easier there. So at this point, you may need to use your Hunter's Immobilize, as this can give you just a few more seconds to uh, stop the enemies there. I used it a little too early, so I didn't root them, but my towers were able to take care of it. But if your towers aren't doing enough damage, you may need to work on some crowd control during the early waves. From this point, we're going to go ahead and start our next setup, which at this point, we want to get rid of our Boulder Roller Tower, so we're going to trash this one and get some points back but the first thing is to get a frozen tower down right here and upgrade this one and we want trait b on this as well and from there our next set is another boulder roller tower here also trait b and our lightning tower is going to go right where we destroyed our old boulder roller tower and for our storm caller towers or the lightning towers, we also want trait B on this once I get enough points. All right, so let's get a few more towers down now and we're gonna place a second party caller here. Make sure you upgrade these as you place them as this is the only way you're going to get the benefit from the tower. And we're gonna go ahead and place one more party starter tower up here just to give some more attack speed. Keep in mind that when you're doing your party starter towers or you're in this phase where everything is pretty easily taken care of, you can skip the waves. However, be careful using this as it doesn't count you clearing the wave until all monsters from that wave are dead. So if you happen to lose the fight because you had too many enemies on the map, it'll revert to the last wave that you cleared all enemies for that uh, round. So we can go ahead and get a few more towers out now and we're going to place a second lightning color tower down right next to the first again upgrading this 
for the trait B. This gives us a good crit chance, which leaves us with more damage for our boulder roller towers on the bottom. Plus they do a decent amount of damage on their own. After that, we want to go ahead and start placing two more party color towers. And it's going to be here and then to the right of this storm collar. So we'll get that placed in just a minute. And then we'll start trying to speed through some towers and upgrading until we get near wave 50. A quick note at this point is you can start upgrading your boulder rollers or your party towers to level 10. However, you really want to make sure you have enough points for this Kraken tower that we're going to place down when we get to wave 50. It's really important that you save enough points for that, otherwise wave 50 is going to be a huge block for you. All right, so here we are at wave 50, and this is the really important step to get past this. You want to place a single Kraken Tower here. You can go ahead and upgrade this to level five if you have the spare points, and we're just going to use trait B. The goal here is to be able to separate these two green mobs so your towers will focus on doing damage to one of them at a time instead of both of them. And the way that the Kraken mechanics will work is it will eventually let one of them get through. Once that second one gets through there, the first one will get trapped by this Kraken Tower and the tower will spawn enough of the eyes to keep it locked in place. And this will allow the Boulder Roller Towers to do all of its damage to just one of the mobs and really allow you to burst through the damage here. If you want a safety net, you can save up enough points to put a second Kraken Tower down here at the bottom. We will need this a little bit later, but if you don't need it, it's better to save the points because after this wave, we're going to end up selling this Kraken Tower up top and that'll make your Kraken Towers a little cheaper. So now that this first green mob is dead, we can go ahead and sell this second, this Kraken Tower and let this wave get by a little bit quicker. So we will go ahead and trash that tower get most of our points back and once these eyes go away our boulder roller towers will clean it up for us but this is a good time to go ahead and start laying out our final defenses which we're going to put a couple kraken towers at the bottom just to make sure nothing gets through for as long as possible
All right, so we have enough points for our last tower now, and this is just a third Kraken tower down here at the bottom. You do want to go ahead and level these up. You only need to level your Kraken towers to level five. Past this point, it gets very expensive and not a lot of benefit for you. And then our last things to upgrade are getting our party towers to level 10, as well as our Frozone Malone tower to level 10, just to give us a little bit more crowd control and more attack speed. If for whatever reason you end up with enough points to summon another tower, you can put one more lightning collar tower or storm collar tower right here in between your party starters. And this can give you a little bit more crit and will allow you to deal just a little bit more damage, maybe even progress past wave 70 or so. So as you can see, wave 60 can take some time just due to the way that the mobs work and they can teleport, but the way that the eyes will keep them on the ledge here will allow you to get through the wave pretty easy. One of the things you can do to make this a little more effective is actually making your towers a lot more compact, having these Krakens closer to the end and this boulder roller a little farther over so that the range of the tower can hit the mob standing here. It was just outside my range here and that was just bad placement on my part, but my lightning collar towers can still take care of it. Well, this looks like pretty much the end of my run here, and we got to wave 80, but wasn't able to clear it. So I guess we're still stuck at the 70 milestone on our best wave so far. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content, and a huge shout out to our Patreon members that support the work we do. Thank you from all of us here at Nocturne Gaming. If you would like to become a patron and get some added benefits, check out the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me, and we'll see you next time.